Praise the name of our God. Praise God. Praise, praise God. in the name of Jesus. God, now as I come this afternoon, God, I thank you for this day. Thank you for every blessing that thou hast bestowed upon us. Thank you now, God, for another opportunity to declare the life-giving word of Jesus Christ. I pray, O oh God, that your word will fall upon good ground. It will spring forth into everlasting life. Somebody in this house today will know that there is a reality in serving a true and a living God. We give you praise, glory, and honor because you deserve it all. It is in Jesus' name we do pray, trust, and do believe. Amen, amen. and amen. We give reverence and obedience to God our Father, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and to the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To our pastor, Pastor Terry Davis. Amen. To my fellow, fellow members of the clergy on this afternoon. Amen. To uh, Dr. Dennis, Mother Davis. Amen. All the members of the First High Park Baptist Church, amen, and members of New Testament this afternoon, thank God for all of you that are in this place at this particular time. Not to, to worry you long, but I came today to let you know that there is a word from, from the Lord. Amen. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4. 2 Timothy, chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter, chapter number four. And I would, if you would join in with me, beginning at verse two and conclude at verse number, number five. Second Timothy chapter two, beginning at verse number two. The count of three, we should read God's word together. One, two, and three. Preach. Four. Verse five, but. Amen. Make full proof of thy ministry. Amen. For our time this afternoon, Dr. Dennis, I just want to tell you this afternoon, do what God called you to do. Do what God called you to do. Amen and amen. Today, 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 amen, in, in the eyes of some, amen, they will call this a historic day Amen. in the Baptist church Amen. or in, in, in the church at all. Yeah, so it's a historic day. But can, can I just be honest with you today and tell you in all actuality, it's just another good day. 
that the Lord has made. And, and since it is a, a good day that God has made, I think that we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. I don't want to diminish what's happening here today because I believe, amen, that it is very important. And I am excited, amen, to be here to witness this great occasion. Dr. Dennis, I want you to know that I salute you on your accomplishment. I applaud First Side Park, amen, for moving forward. And certainly and most importantly, I honor our pastor for following the mandate of God. What's happening, what's happening here today, brothers and sisters, it continues a long tradition that began over 2,000 years ago with Jesus and his apostles. Dr. Dennis, according to us and, and, and uh, Pastor Davis, she has met all the qualifications, amen, to be ordained as a minister of the gospel. These, these, these particular qualifications, my brothers and sisters, have nothing to do with gender. I, I wish I had one witness here. Because I, I believe today that if she was not a faithful member of First High Park, if she was not a faithful supporter of First High Park, if she was not a faithful supporter of Pastor Davis, there will be no way on God's green earth, whether you're male or female, that Pastor Davis would ordain ordain you. Can, can I just go ahead and get, get this out the way and be done with it, brothers and sisters? When, when, it, when it comes to preaching the gospel, amen, it has nothing to do with your gender. I, I wish I had a witness here. You understand, it's, it's God's business as to who he calls to declare his holy word. And I, I think that, amen, it's now time that the church recognize that whoever God calls, he qualifies. And, and, and we got to get out of the mindset that every time a, a sister says that she has been called by God, amen, that we want to push her down and say she hasn't been called. But well, why can't the same stipulation apply to the man? Who God calls, he, he qualifies, and it's, it's, it's God's business. And, 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 and if Dr. Dennis, if you're not under the, 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 the authority of God, God will deal with you. Oh, I need everybody in this house to know that this is God's business. Today's text, today's text, brothers and sisters, Paul is writing to uh, a young preacher by the name of Timothy. A young man, amen, upon whom Paul had himself placed his own hands upon. Paul, amen, he ordained Timothy to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I need you to understand today, Pastor, uh, uh, Dr. Dennis, as we stated in the back, Pastor Davis needs your help. I, I, I wish some church folks would talk to me here. Not, not only do he need Dr. Dennis, but he need every member of First High Park uh, help, amen, a amen, these pastors, I mean, they can tell you, amen, it's hard out here, amen, trying to serve the people of God, and the people of God are bucking against everything that you're trying to do, amen, loosen the battle, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the battle for the pastor, don't let him have to fight this thing all by himself, so, so anytime that you can be of some assistance to him, be found faithful, amen, to your, your pastor. Paul writes to Timothy, he knows, amen, that his time here on earth, amen, is, is coming to an end. And before he leaves this world, he wants, amen, Timothy to have a good understanding as to what his calling and ministry is all about. So then Paul, he, he takes a pen and he writes these verses out in our, of our text this afternoon. And Dr. Dennis, this is what I want to convey to you uh, this afternoon. If you walk with me just a little while, there's three things I need to share with you concerning uh, do what God has called 
you to do. Number one, I want to talk to you about the preacher's mandate. All right, all right. Number two, I want to talk to you about the preacher's message. And thirdly, the preacher's ministry. In verses 1 and verse 2, the A part of verse 2, you find there the preacher's mandate. Uh, Dr. Dennis, your, 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 your mandate is this. Amen. He says, be a preacher of the word. Paul, he tells Timothy, amen, to preach, amen, the word. And Dr. Dennis, I echo those same words today. Amen. Don't nobody want to hear about what's going on in, 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 in Jet Magazine on BET, amen, and Love and Hip Hop. They wants to know what the word of God, amen, is saying. So preach, preach the word of God. Preach the Bible, amen. In order, in order for us to preach the Bible, amen, we as preachers, as well as those of you that sit in the pew, we have got to become familiar with, with our Bibles. Say, say amen, somebody. The Bible, the Bible says in 2 Timothy uh, 2 and 15, study. Uh-huh, to show yourself approved. And I, I, I don't know why, amen, we, we under the mindset that, amen, is this talking to the clergy. Amen, but every, every, amen, born again, believer of God ought to spend some time studying the word. Don't take my word on it. Amen. Every now and then we may mess up. Amen. But if you study for yourself, the Bible says rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh-huh. That you won't be ashamed. Amen. Amen. And that, that's listen. That's why, that's why, amen. When you see the Jehovah Witness come, you run. Uh-huh. You, you duck and hide, you don't answer the door, amen. When the Muslims come, you don't want nothing to do with them. But when you know what the word of God says, amen, you can stand. Stand on his word. Preach. Preach the word of God. In verse 2a, the preacher, amen, has to uh, uh, master, be a master of the winds. Paul said for us to be, be instant. This means to be present or to be, be ready. The idea here is that, amen, there will be times, amen, when preaching will be easy. And there are going to be some times when it's showing sure up hard. There will be times, amen, when you can't wait to preach the word of God. And then there will be some times when the very thought, amen, of preaching will make you feel sick. There will be times, amen, when, amen, people will listen to you. And then there will be other times when you can't buy an amen. Uh, but regardless, regardless of how the wind blows, at any given time, your job at any particular time is to stand forth and preach the word of God. Be ready. Be in your place and preach God's words. No excuses. No whining. Just be ready. Dr. Dennis, do what God has called you to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Secondly, secondly, in the B part of verse 2 up into uh, verse number 4, I see there the preacher's message. Our message today, amen, must be a convicting message. Paul, listen, listen at his words. He says, he says to reprove. This refers to preaching that brings some conviction, amen, on the hearts of the people. This is preaching that corrects the errors of man's beliefs and practices. This kind of preaching holds a, a bright light, amen, of the word of God against the, uh, the ugliness of sin and the exposing sin for what it is. Preaching will do that today, brothers and sisters. Not only should our message be a uh, a convicting message, but it also be a confronting message. Yeah, yeah. Paul says, the next word he used, he says, rebuke. Uh, while reprove, amen, expresses the sinfulness of sin, rebuke exposes the sinfulness of the sinner. This is a personal side of preaching, my brothers and sisters. Can I tell you today, amen, too many preachers shy away because they don't want to hurt the people's feelings. Uh-huh, scared, scared to say something because they're going to stop giving. Uh, scared to say something because they're going to stop coming. But listen, any saved person, amen, whether the word hits you or not, amen, you're going to do what the word of God says. Uh-huh. It don't make, makes no make difference who you, you are, where you come from. Amen. If you're living on this side, every now and then, the word of God is going to convict all of us. Why? Because all of us have sinned and come short 
of the glory of God. Our message also need to be a confronting message. Paul says to exhort. Amen. Call to one's side. When, amen, a preacher, uh, we, we, when we as preachers, we are to thunder against sin. We are to also encourage and comfort the people of God. This is not done by our intellect or our eloquent words, but rather, amen, it's taking the word of God and putting people, amen, pointing people in a biblical solution to whatever problem that they may be facing. A message, amen, must be a compassionate message. Paul says, amen, with all long suffering, this has the idea of patience and endurance, amen, as the preachers carry out God, uh, giving ministry to confront sin, to challenge the saints, and confront the hurting, we must keep in mind, listen, we was once just like them. Huh? We, we was once just like them. Can I tell you something? So, some of us are still like them. Huh? I know I am, but I'm trying my best to tell you exactly that. Amen. But we, 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 we as preachers and pastors, amen, we got to remember just the other day we was cussing folks out. Huh? Just the other day, we were slipping and dipping. We was drinking. We were smoking. We were doing all just the other day. But, but thank God one day, we can't never forget where we, where we came from. And the same God that brought me out will bring you out as well. The preacher is to walk with the people with the heart of a brother or sister in Christ. We are to love them like the Lord loves them. Paul said, charity suffereth long and is kind. In other words, brothers and sisters, keep reproving, keep rebuking, and keep exhorting even when they don't respond. Keep leading them through the green pastures and beside, amen, the still waters of God's word. Our message also must be a confirming word. Paul here, he uses now the word doctrine. Paul now returns to where he first started with preaching the word of God. This is where everything rises and falls. We are to preach the word, amen, and we are to instruct people in the doctrine of this book. Somebody say this book. book. Listen, it's not about your beliefs. What does the book say? It's not about your opinion. What does the book say? It's not about your thoughts. What does the book say? It's not about how you feel. What does the book say, brothers and sisters? What, it, what matters most is what does say the Lord. Can I tell you today that the Bible is our sole authority. The Bible tells us how to live and how to, to grow. The Bible teaches them how, amen, they are to respond to the reproofs and the rebukes of preaching. The Bible, brothers and sisters, must never be compromised, but it must be proclaimed in power and in authority. Yeah, yeah. When this happens, when this happens, amen, the Holy Ghost, the paraclete, amen, will take it and use it in order to illuminate the minds of the people. Amen. The Holy Spirit, amen, will draw men unto himself through the preaching and the trusting of the word of God. Yeah. That's why Jesus said, let your light so shine before men yeah, that yeah. they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. I came today to tell you that somebody, amen, besides the preachers, amen, got to be the salt of the earth. Got to be the light of the world because somebody needs your influence today. Somebody needs to see your light. See your light. On the day. Thirdly, thirdly, brothers and sisters, verse 5. I see there the preacher's ministry. The ministry must be, the minister rather, must be of sobriety. Paul uses the word, he says, to, to watch, which means to abstain from, to be sober. It is a call for the preacher to be alert, to walk through this life with our eyes wide open. What, what should, Dr. Dennis, what should you watch for? Well, let, let me tell you. First thing you need to watch for is those jokers. 
that's speaking against your pastor. Uh -huh. and, and, and if you get wind of them speaking against your pastor, you got to be bold enough to put that Negro in check. You don't say nothing about my pastor. Y'all ought to help me. New Testament, y'all ought to say something. Don't nobody else say something. Don't, don't let nobody speak ill against your pastor. Watch for those who are trying, amen, to destroy the flock. You understand that everybody, amen, amen, that come to church is not sheep. And every now and then some goats wander in. Amen. And goats, amen, will do all they can, amen, to devour the sheep to cause havoc in the church. But you got to be mindful. Mindful. Pastor, Pastor I'm, uh, 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 I'm hoping I ain't out of. Man, preach, man, preach. Okay. Then you got to watch for the wicked one who would do all they can to destroy the ministry. You, you listen. I don't care what you say. There's somebody at First High Park, Amen, that may not agree with what Pastor Davis is doing today, huh? But guess what? He's your pastor, and whatever the pastor says, do the church ought to follow. As long as the church follows after the, 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 the leadership of their pastor, that church will bloom. But any time, amen, any time we get out of, amen, amen, and try to walk in front of him and, and try to us up authority over him, God is going to curse it. You, you wonder why you ain't blessed. You probably got your mouth on your pastor. I've been gone from First High Park 18 years. What? 18 years. And I still honor Pastor Davis as my pastor, as my father in ministry, and want nobody, nobody say anything negative in my presence about him. Nobody. I don't stand six foot four, 460 pounds for nothing. As I said, listen, I ain't forgot how. You understand? I ain't forgot how. And when, when, you, when you start disrespecting, amen, the man of God who God has placed over you, you might as well look for some trouble. You ought, you, you ought to have that same mindset, brothers and sisters. The ministry must be a ministry of steadfastness. Paul says, endure. Yeah. Dr. Dennis, serving God is not the easiest life in the world. The enemies of the soul, the enemies of the world, the flesh and the devil, they're all striving to destroy you. And add to the fact, every now and then, God will use a hardship in order to train you. God will use a hardship to train you. You, you don't believe? Come here, Joe. God told the devil, have you considered my servant, Joe? That ain't Listen, Elijah would tell you that, that, that God called him one day. Read, read the 17th chapter of 1 Kings. God told him, say, get away and go down to the brook of Sharif. Yeah. But apparently Elijah wasn't listening to God real good. Because God said, I'm going to sustain you there. But amen, when Elijah got there, he stayed there a couple of days. The Bible said the brook dried up. There was no water. There was no substance. And I can just imagine that he wondered what in the world is going on. God, you done told me to come down here. And now I don't have nothing to sustain me. But here come God. God sent a dirty bird to bring him flesh. God allowed water to come back in, 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 in the brook. Amen. God will take care of his children. Uh, 
So don't, don't, don't worry about when the hardship comes. God is training you. He's preparing you, amen, for what's to come next. The afflictions of life, amen, they help us to comfort others when they are going through. It often takes someone, amen, that has been broken to minister to another who is broken. So don't be surprised and fall out, amen, when the trials of life come your way. It has been said that, that, that amen, that, that those who God would use greatly, he must first hurt them deeply. The ministry, the ministry must be a ministry of sharing. Paul says, evangelize. God, amen, has called you to point others to Jesus. This is the goal and the point of every sermon that we preach. In fact, this should be the job of every Christian, amen, is showing and telling someone how they can get to a man named Jesus. The ministry must be a ministry of stability. Paul says, make full proof. This means, amen, to be being, amen, in full measure. Uh, it uses the idea of a ship moving across the sea, amen, with its sail set, set catching every ounce of available breeze. The preachers, the preachers to set their sails, catch the wind of God, and allow God to use you to his fullest capacity. And at the end of the day, Amen. Being full of measure, this attitude is depicted by Caleb in Joshua chapter 14, where the Bible says he wholly followed, amen, the Lord his God. This means that he set his one sails and he catched all the available wind in order to do what the Lord wanted him to do. So today, my, my brothers and sisters, Dr. Dennis, yes, sir. let nothing hold you back. But go with God and do what God has called you to do. That's all I got to tell you today. Do what God has called you to do. Yeah. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come, brothers and sisters, when they would not endure sound doctrine. But after their own uh, lust, they shall heap unto themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away from their ears from the truth and shall be amen turn to fables but watch thou in all things yeah, yeah. endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist and make full proof of your ministry yeah, yeah. do what God has called you to do yeah. preach God's word yeah. preach it like Paul Dr. Dennis amen have a convincing testimony as to what God amen has done for you Preach it like Moses, amen. Sometimes you may have to suffer, amen, but that's all right. For I did read in the word of God, if I suffer with Christ, one day I reign with him. Preach it, Dr. Dennis, whatever you preach it like Stephen. Yield yourself unto the Lord to be used by him. Preach it like Elisha. Recognize that you may need a double portion of the Holy Spirit. Preach it like Ezekiel, Dr. Dennis. Amen. Cry out in the midst of a dry lot, in, in the midst of a valley. Oh, ye dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Dr. Dennis, preach it like Ruth. Make up your mind whose side you're going to be on. Preach it like Esther. Amen. If you perish, then let me perish. For it's all right because I'm doing the work of my, my God. And finally, preach it like the woman at the well. Tell everybody you come in contact with. Come see a man. God be the glory. Amen. Just preach it. Amen. Praise be unto God. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Doug Brady. Amen. He is one of my beloved sons. Oh, and I am well pleased. Amen. Thank God. Amen. I'm not boasting, but I got, I have about 10 or 12, 14, 15 that have started preaching in my, under my ministry, and I am happy for that. Amen. Amen. I thank God for all my sons and daughters. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Amen. We moving on. Uh, brethren, uh, these three chairs right here, just go ahead and move them out of the way and put them back. Um. <clears throat> Uh, 
Dr. Dennis, if you could just stand up and just scoot your chair up a little bit closer, closer in the center there.